Um, but we're also going to start with we're also going to start with a little bit of housekeeping work just before we get going. Um, when you came into the room, your mic, uh, microphone, and your video are muted. Um, this helps to keep the system from crashing. So if you could please keep them muted during the call, this will definitely help us greatly. If you have some questions that you'd like to ask, in the top right uh, corner of your screen, you'll see a chat feature. We will do a Q&A portion at the end of the presentation, and uh, Jesse and I would be more than happy to answer all of your questions. If for some reason you get dis disconnected from the video portion of your screen, um, I'm sorry, from, if you get disconnected from the video presentation, um, there's a number, phone number listed on your screen that you can call into. Uh, please keep this information handy. You might want to take a screenshot from your phone or from your computer right now, um, just, just in case you get disconnected. Uh, but don't worry, we've got you covered. There's this video, uh, this presentation will be recorded and we will share it on the Together for FOCO website, which is together for, like the number four, foco.com. Um, if you also have any other questions that you would like to ask either Jesse or myself, um, but don't necessarily want to add that into the chat box feature, totally okay. Our contact information is listed here. And uh, you can feel free to reach out to us. We are happy to help in any way that we can. All right, so it is right at 11 o'clock. I know that we still have a few people joining in on the call, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get started just to be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, so my name is Michelle Daniels. I am the Director of Tourism for the Forsyth County Chamber of Commerce. Um, I know many of you know me personally, and so you know that I have a big strong passion for social media and for digital marketing. I have dabbled into this field for over 15 years now and um, I am no expert. I know it's hard to say that, especially um, during these times, but I do have a passion for it and uh, we are excited to share a lot of really good tips and tricks to help you get through this really crazy time. And um, so that segues me to introducing you to Jesse Martin. Jesse. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jesse Martin. I am the director of events at the Forsyth County Chamber. Um, with this COVID-19 pandemic, my role at the chamber has shifted um, over the last few weeks. I have now been doing um, the chamber's social media. So I've learned a lot about social media in a very short amount of time. So I'm very excited to be able to share that with you. Awesome, thanks, Jesse. Okay, so the big elephant in the room, the big question a lot of people are asking is, why do you even need a social strategy right now? So um, especially with the new order that the governor um, instilled yesterday, uh, staying connected is now more important than ever because so many of us are connected and rely on social media to stay in touch with friends and family. Uh, many of you, like myself, you that's the way that you're consuming news right now. Um, but for the most part, the way that my husband and I are using social media right now for the most part <laughs> is to stay entertained. We definitely need some comic relief. I know you've seen a lot of Tiger King references references right now. So uh, social media right now is just so incredibly crucial. And um, Facebook and Instagram have done a lot of statistic gathering over the course of the last three weeks. And they have actually shared two days ago as of March 14th or since March 14th, they have seen a 40% increase in usage due to COVID-19. Um, this it has a lot to do with the views that they've seen on Instagram Live, people utilize Facebook Live, um, and those features specifically have doubled in just a week. So that's over the course of last week. Um, you can find a lot of these sources from Later.com, and I will actually touch upon what Later.com is in just a bit. Um, but as a very popular social influencer and Instagram expert, Jenna Kutcher has said, this is not the season to be quiet. This is the season to communicate. Um, I know that I have seen a lot of local businesses kind of shut down, um, not even <laughs> physically in their you know, brick and mortar stores, but they've also shut down their um, communication on Facebook and Instagram, which is not necessarily the best idea. So we are gonna give you a lot of really great ideas um, and some local examples, because right now your followers are spending more on uh, online time online than they ever have before. And this is providing a really unique opportunity for you and for your business to really deepen your relationship 
relationship with your audience, to increase your brand, brand affinity, to share your mission, to share who you are, and just to really stay connected with um, your new followers, maybe some current customers, and then people who might not know that you're there, but then when all this is done, they're gonna jump right in and want to support your business because you've been sharing a really great social strategy um, starting now. So with that to be said, Jesse's going to share with you guys um, some really great platforms and going to go into which platforms and what they are. Thanks, Michelle. So there are tons of many um, social media platforms out there, as we all know, but three of the most popular ones that we're going to be discussing today are Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So each platform has a different target audience, so it's very important to pick the platform that works best for your business and organization. Um, so we're going to break down these three platforms to try to help you decide. So first, we have Facebook. So Facebook is the most dominant social media platform in today's world. It has over 2 billion active monthly users. And as Michelle mentioned before, they have seen a 40% increase in, in usage due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so Facebook is also used by people of all ages. So this is great for your audience. 75% um, of Americans between the ages of 18 through 49 use Facebook. So there are many different tools that Facebook has to um, offer to help your business um, the ones that we're going to be touching on today are Facebook Analytics as well as Facebook Live. So Facebook Analytics, also known as Facebook Insights, gives you details about how your posts are doing um, and how people are interacting with your post. So this allows you to track which content you post that works best for your business. Um, so for example, content meaning if you want to do just a simple text post, a text with image post, um, a video, infographic, it kind of helps decide um, what post is reaching the most audience. Um, so for example, on the Chambers Facebook page, we have noticed that when we post videos that we are getting the most reach and the most engagement out of those. Um, so for example, we posted a video back on March 20th that Maurice Deli sent into us highlighting their curbside um, delivery. We have noticed that that post has over 5,500 uh, people reached for it and that are still today engaging with it. Um, so honestly, there is not a set like plan of which content works best for each business or an organization. Um, it's honestly for you guys to try to just play around and see what works best for you, but pay co close attention to those analytics um, to help you decipher that. So another tool that Facebook has is Facebook Live. Um, Facebook Live allows you to live stream from your computer or cell phone, um, and this streams directly to the viewers on the Facebook news feed. Um, this allows your business to continue interactions with your customers. Um, Michelle will speak upon this later, but Wednesday's Hash Night Shopping, and, uh, Shopping Night in America was mainly done through Facebook Live, and I know it was a huge success for those businesses to still be able to reach out to their consumers um, to sell their goods. So our next social media platform that we're going to be discussing is Instagram. So Instagram has become the new home for brands, according to for, um, Forbes. Instagram is a photo based network, as many of you guys know, um, but it's actually owned by Facebook. So many things can be uploaded to Instagram and Facebook with just one simple click. Um, Instagram is very popular with teenagers, but many young adults and adults are on it as well. So it's a great platform to be on for your business. So similar to Facebook, Instagram has different tools for your business. Um, the ones that we're going to highlight today are Instagram stories, the use of hashtags, and um, Instagram TV. So Instagram stories is content that you put on Instagram that disappears in 24 hours. So it is clips of either videos or images that last to about 10 seconds. Um, and as Michelle mentioned, um, we are seeing tons of engagement on Instagram stories. Everyone is staying at home um, and they don't want to have FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out. So they're just constantly clicking to see what everyone is doing to stay um, engaged at home and all that. So this is a great way for your organization or business to be seen. Um, also with Instagram stories, the more you post or the more you post, the more um, you're likely to be seen but you want to make sure that you spread out when you post in your story so every time you post something new to your story you get bumped to that front of it um so some 
ideas for your Instagram stories to help make them engaging. Um, ask questions to your audience. Um, the Chamber has done it, Discover FOCO has done it. Just a simple question, what's for dinner, FOCO? Um, has really, we've seen tons of engagement from that. Uh, people will just post their answers, you'll receive the answers, and you can post those throughout your story throughout the day. Um, another idea you can do is creating an info, an inf interactive graphic, excuse me there, um, that allows people to tag other businesses in it. So for example, on um, Wednesday for Shopping Night in America, the Chamber made an um, what's your favorite FOCO store that our viewers were able to copy that image and tag people on that. And so and that expands your reach as well. And you also want to use hashtags. So hashtags allow your content to become more discoverable. So a hashtag is the pound sign, um, followed by either a word, words, number, um, an emoji actually works to um, that describe your post. And how hashtag works is that anyone who clicks on that hashtag will be taken to the search page with other posts that also use utilize that same hashtag. Uh, people can choose to also follow specific hashtags that immediately pop up on their newsfeed. I mean, I know for me personally, I follow the hashtag Forsyth County one, so um, I'll be scrolling through my feed and see images that use that hashtag as well. So some tips for using hashtag for you guys is limit your hashtag use to only 10 max. Um, I know that Instagram allows, I think, up to around 30, but we want to make sure that you are limiting to 10 max so you're not overpowering um, with, it, with it. You also want to post your hashtags in the comment section. Don't post them in um, your caption, post them in your comments. This also helps with your engagement because um, it shows up that you have a comment on your post. Um, you also want to create hashtags that are relevant to your post. Um, you don't want to post a picture of like a spring flower and then hashtag it fall because it just doesn't line up. Um, and use different hashtags for different posts. Um, don't copy and paste the same hashtag for every post. It's okay to have a few that are the same, but you do want to switch it up to make it more um, interactive for everyone to be able to utilize. So as I mentioned earlier, you still do want to use those hashtags in your stories. Um, this is important because this gives your story the opportunity to be able to be featured on that whole hashtag story, which in return can increase your engagement like crazy. Um, so our next, we have Instagram TV. So Instagram TV is a kind of a new feature to Instagram. It is videos that are longer than um, the posts that, the videos that you post on your feed. So these videos can last up to 10 minutes. Um, you also have the avail availability to show a one minute preview in your feed um, where your viewers can click to view more of that video. Um, so this is a great feature if you want to be able to post a longer video on your Instagram. Um, but please keep in mind, if you do that, you want your video to be very engaging. So you want it to catch your audience's attention within like that first five seconds. Um, so they want to continue watching it. So our next social media platform is LinkedIn. So LinkedIn's audience is more for business professionals who are looking to expand their business network and consume more professional content, such as news articles related to their field, tips and advice, and other business content. So if you feel like this does not pertain to your business, LinkedIn 100% can help your business. Um, so on LinkedIn, you want to make sure that you create a company page and that your page is complete. So a completed page means that it has your company listed, a cover image, a logo, your company description, and company details. And LinkedIn will walk you through all this as well um, when you sign up for it. But having a completed page gives your viewers more um, to look at and to learn more about your business. So in terms of content for LinkedIn, um, you want to post, but you also want to um, comment and share other people's posts. And you want to do this at least once a day is what LinkedIn recommends. Um, so for example, if you see an article on LinkedIn that can pertain to your business, share that post, but comment on how it can also, on how it can help your business. So it expands your reach as well. Um, so similar to Facebook, LinkedIn has analytics that you can track what content you're posting um, engages your followers more. So just be sure to look at that as well and adapt your plan to that. 
Um, so these are just a few of the platforms that are out there um, with a very quick and easy rundown of them all. Um, so I'm going to pass it back to Michelle, who's going to share some more tips on creating engaging content. Thanks, Jesse. So as we mentioned before, your followers are spending more time online than they ever have before. When, and this does present a really unique opportunity for each business to really deepen your, your relationship with your audience. Um, but as we all know right now, you can't just be running business as usual. Everything has um, completely drastically shifted and changed over the course of the last three weeks. And so in order to really stay relevant and um, to get the most engagement possible, um, we have seen that the hardest part is just really because the world is changing, honestly, sometimes by the hour. Um, as we all witnessed yesterday in the state of Georgia, everything kind of shifted by the hour. And as social media expert Steph Gilbert has shared, this presents brands and social media managers with the unique opportunity and the challenge of embracing an unsettling time. Right now, we need to become as human as possible on social media, which can be a little bit difficult to do. And then also juggling the necessary bit of marketing and selling in order to stay in business. So remember right now, unfortunately, because this is all so new, there is not, um, there's no one expert in how to market your business on social media through a global pandemic. So while we can't offer you tried and tested marketing strategies to help your business right now, we can give you some really good tips and guiding principles to really help you think outside the box so that you can make really awesome posts and uh, creative decisions as this crisis evolves. So we're gonna share with you some guiding principles um, to help market on social media for, co for COVID-19. The first and foremost is just to listen and acknowledge your audience. Right now, we're all going through this together. You've seen a lot of those hashtags, we're in this together. And of course, our message in Forsyth County is together for FOCO. So you just wanna listen and acknowledge and just because a lot of times people just wanna be heard right now. Um, and you really wanna be as empathetic as possible. Also, while doing all of that, just provide some really organic value. Um, you can turn your platforms into a really valuable resource for your audience, utilizing videos to really show and share some educational opportunities, what your business does, what your mission is, who do you stand for? What are some of the philanthropies that you are engaged in currently? This is a really great way to um, focus on engagement first and, and helping to drive traffic without trying to constantly kind of sell, sell, sell. But one of the things, like I mentioned before, that you definitely want to keep doing is keep on posting. Your followers are spending so much time online and they're just being inundated. We are just being bombarded with so much content that if you have a really engaging and valuable content, your um, audience is going to automatically go to your channel first because they're going to be able to see all kinds of really great marketing tips or um, valuable techniques or really creative um, videos or posts that you're sharing to really kind of lighten the mood. So that's one of the really great things. Just keep on posting. You're really gonna see as you're posting the posts that get the most engagement, whether it be a video, um, an infographic, or a really funny picture or a meme, you're really gonna start to see when your audience is the most engaged and what posts those are. And as you're seeing that, um, really kind of become creative and see how you can take those posts that are, are getting the most engagement and really kind of think, think outside the box to kind of continue that momentum. The copy in your captions, as Jesse mentioned, especially on Instagram, is more important than ever because you can really provide content context for the content that you are sharing. Uh, a lot of this and a lot of the posts that I've seen over the course of the last three weeks, some businesses are even treating the captions as almost like a miniature blog, kind of sharing how they're doing, how the business is doing, and then the ways that the community can help or the ways that they're helping the community. Um, everyone is just kind of jumping on board. And like I said, keeping it light and uh, meaningful just really, really helps your business ex exponentially. 
So here are some local examples that we're going to share with you today. Uh, Visit Halcyon has just done an insanely amazing job. Their marketing team has just been incredibly innovative in a social distancing world. Because right now, we obviously, um, we can't really necessarily go and just kind of walk around Halcyon or Vickery or any of the really cool shopping features and markets that we have in our community. So, uh, but Halcyon's done a really great job with the Halcyon Rocks project, as well as the Virtual Kids Club. Um, both of those are really great examples of creating free and valuable content that is driving an engagement. So one of the things that they've also done is participated in the Great American Takeout. They've also done the Shopping Night in America, and they've really kind of captured the businesses that are still open in the facility to really kind of be real and be authentic, sharing their message, sharing their brand. They're doing a really, really great job. So if you haven't already been following them either on Facebook or Instagram, I really highly encourage you to do so because it's a really good marketing tool and some good ideas for you to market your businesses in the future. The next one, and I think a lot of you might have seen uh, Stephen Hartsock and some of the incredible things that he's doing in our community is with Socks Love Barbecue. They have teamed up um, with multiple organizations from the place of Forsyth County. Um, they've teamed up with uh, One With Outfitters to create some new shirts that gives right back to the community. But Steven and his team are an incredible example for the restaurant industry. He is consistently using Instagram to really share his message and his brand and to communicate with his customers to provide really great content about giving back to the community. He is one of those that has drastically shifted. His message from three weeks ago to yesterday has completely shifted. So he is one of those that has changed just as the virus has changed. So um, one of those um, accounts, especially in the restaurant industry, which I know is so typically, it's so hard to do to market a restaurant right now, but this um, particular restaurant is a really good example of how to be very genuine with your audience. And lastly, the Gibson Company. Uh, Mark and Clarissa have just knocked it out of the park and come up with a remarkable message on all of their feeds from their Facebook messaging to how they're sharing their story on Instagram. Um, they partnered with the For You movement and just it's incredibly an innovative um, movement that they have created. And what they have done is they offered 100 free t-shirts that said for you listed on it. And there was no, you didn't have to buy any other merchandise or anything. It was just, you go on their website and you purchase the shirt, you put in a discount code and they shipped it to you. All you had to do was pay, with, pay for shipping. Um, but this was just the start of the movement that you'll see. But they've had a lot of incredible success over the course of the last two weeks with their live Facebook shopping events. Um, they're one of the businesses locally that we have seen firsthand that sharing their message and your brand live with your audience, and I'm not saying just go live for 20 minutes. They've been going live for about an hour and a half, um, and they've done a really remarkable job. And when I spoke with Carissa, Clarissa, she said that um, both of the shopping events that they've done live on Facebook have just been a huge success. Um, all of these are really great examples of Jab, 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 Right Hook, which is a fantastic book by Gary Vanderchuk that I highly recommend each of you to purchase or read or rent from the library, whatever you can do. Um, but what it basically says is give your followers a ton of free, valuable content and then jab them with that right hook at the end with your selling. Um, it's been really remarkable. We've seen a lot of the local businesses take this initiative and just run with it. So I know it's really hard right now, but some of these are some really good examples to kind of get you started. And now Jesse's going to share some really great tools. Thanks, Michelle. So one of the chamber's favorite tools that we use is Canva. And if you're looking through all the, um, the examples that Michelle shared, you saw they had some fantastic graphics. Well, guess what? Canva can help you create those. So Canva is a quick and easy way to design these social media graphics, but you can also um, design those Instagram stories that I previously talked about, infographics, um, and more. In fact, the presentation that we are on today is actually made from Canva. So it has tons of great features for you. Um, one of my favorite features is, is the templates that it has. 
Um, so these templates, literally, you can just drag and drop in your images you want to use, or you completely cut, you can completely customize them to how you want them to look. Um, so I know a lot of our recent images that we post, we have kind of branded with our Together for FOCO initiative. Um, so we have branded them, branded those images that way and tweaked those templates a little bit. Um, so what is even better about Canva it, is it does have a free version. Um, so that is wonderful. But we, Michelle and I do recommend that if you can to get that paid version. Um, because the paid version has tons and tons and tons of even more features for you to have. I mean, it gives you access to over thousands of fonts, even more templates, um, tons of stock images that you can use, um, and so much more. So it's about $10 per month, um, but it's totally worth the investment if you guys can do that. Um, so Canva does have tons of guides if you are a beginner with it um, to help you understand the basics. But Michelle and I are also pretty handy at it. Um, so if you have any questions about it, you can feel free to reach out to us and we can kind of walk you through the steps of it. But we definitely recommend getting Canva um, as one of your tools for social media. Thanks, Jesse. And I know I touched upon this earlier, but Later.com is actually a really amazing marketing platform that initially was created just for Instagram. For those of you who have utilized Instagram before today, um, you know that you cannot schedule Instagram posts, which is incredibly frustrating, especially for content creators who like to schedule either weekly or monthly posts which I know is very difficult right now. But later.com has actually instilled a really cool visual plan and scheduler that you can analyze posts for Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and now Twitter. And it's actually a scheduler, so you can actually go on and you can um, visually see what your posts are going to look like, kind of change things around, and then what later.com will do is they'll send you a text saying, hey, it's time to post your, uh, your scheduled post. And so all you have to do is go to later and just hit post and boom, you're done. Um, and just like Canva, um, Later has a free version and a pro version. Um, the free version is perfectly fine to use. It just limits the amount of posts that you can actually schedule and analyze. That's, that's the biggest difference between the free version and the pro version. But there are tons of different scheduling tools that you can use that we highly recommend. It just makes things a lot easier, especially right now, because you need to use um, all the time that you can to be able to actually chat offline with your customers, with your following, um, with new customers that might be engaging and reaching out to you. So this is just one free tool that you can use. Um, Appy, which is A-P-P-H-I, is another scheduler that you can use that you can actually schedule an Instagram post. So it's one of the new ones that have partnered with Instagram, um, but we can actually do a full entire um, webinar here in the next couple of weeks that is just focused on Instagram because that is a whole beast of a, <laughs> of a course that we could share in, in a whole entire hour. So if you do have questions about Instagram or Facebook, make sure to use that chat feature that you can find in the top right hand corner of um, the screen. Um, because we're going to do a whole entire question and answer section here in just a few minutes. But like I said, these are just two tools that you can use, and it's canva.com and later.com to help you get started. So now we're going to open up to questions. Um, what questions do you guys have right now for me and for Jesse? And you guys can use the chat feature. Um, if you want to audibly speak it, just let us know, and Alex or Jesse will be able to unmute you, and you can actually ask your question in real time. So we're waiting on some questions to come in. Um, I'm going to ask you guys a quick question, and you all can answer in the chat. Um, is there any other social media webinar content that you would like to see that would help you? Um, so if you have any suggestions for that, please share that in the comments.
And I did see um, that Tori has asked for a deeper dive into LinkedIn. And yes, we will actually be doing another webinar probably next week um, just on LinkedIn. Um, I know Susan asked about a suggested frequency for Instagram posts and Facebook posts. That's a fantastic question. Um, one of the ones that I have struggled with, especially over the course of the last three weeks, I know Jesse and I have kind of gone back and forth as far as how frequently should the Chamber be posting or the Together for FOCO, how frequently should we be posting there? Because you don't want to overwhelm your following. So what we've seen, especially since, and this is all content I'm talking about since March 11th to now, which is totally completely shifted. Um, but we're noticing really early posts. We're talking before 8 a.m. and after 8 p.m. Those are the two time frames that we've seen the highest level of engagement. I am assuming that is because many parents are at home and they're having to deal with the craziness of um, online learning and being teachers and then having to deal with the kids at home and then having to also be full-time um, full workers as well and still keeping the momentum going with their businesses. So if you can go ahead and schedule out a couple of posts early in the morning and then maybe scatter them throughout the day. I'm noticing if you can start a few posts early in the morning, maybe like one really great um, engaging post that asks a question because the more questions you can ask your following, the more times that they can comment on those um, those feeds or those timeline questions, you will get so much more engagement because Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, the, the way the algorithm is shifted, it actually boosts your posts the more times people are engaging with a post. And I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, um, just let me know. You can send me an email and you and I can actually do an entire one-on-one -on -one call and I can actually walk you through and show you some really good examples of what I'm talking about. Um, but I guess the long way of saying, um, there's really no one way or one answer for how frequently you should be posting. But I think if you can post over the course of several hours, don't do all of your content in one sitting. That's really, it's probably not the best way to do it. Because what happens is, especially on Instagram, if you post everything like on an Instagram story in one go, there's going to be so many people that come after you that are sharing their stories that you're going to actually get bumped out of the viewing of your followers. So if you can actually share maybe once an hour on your Instagram story, I've seen some really great, um, very effective and very successful posts that have become viral because people have been sharing that in that frequency. I hope that answers your question, Susan. Um, and one of the things that I've also noticed um, is people are asking, do you recommend teens or young adults to assist given they're more um, accustomed to using social media? The answer is absolutely 100% yes. Um, because the way that we speak to each other as adults to either each other, because we might be in the same age group, we don't necessarily have the same message that the younger generations might want to hear. Um, the millennial age group is your buying power right now. So they are actually the ones, they're not the ones that are partying in Florida and causing a lot of the chaos that you're seeing. They're the ones that are actually driving a lot of the sales and commerce force right now. So if you have someone that's in that age range, especially like in the younger 20s, just reach out to them and see how you can utilize social media. I know TikTok is a really big one that has catching a lot of momentum right now. And it's because a lot of people are going there because it is so nice and it's fun and it's engaging and it kind of takes you away from the chaos that you're hearing and the noise that you're hearing outside. Um, so that might be one that you might want to reach out to because I've seen some really cool businesses that have utilized TikTok and Instagram to really make their following a lot of fun. And then Leslie, I see that you um, asked the question that you see less engagement with posts that are scheduled versus the ones that you have posted. Um, how is your content with the posts that you're being scheduled? Are you scheduling like content that has had high engagement before? Um, or are you scheduling like content that is about average? Um, Cause I mean, on the chamber side, when we schedule posts, we still get engagement from them. Um, so maybe try looking to see what like the content is compared to how you have posted um, before.
I will also um, mention Leslie, because that's a really great question about engagement. And I actually had a conversation with several business owners over the course of this week, and we've noticed a huge, um, that our posts aren't as engaged and people aren't commenting as frequently. And I, I honestly think it's just because people are so overwhelmed right now with social media that they're kind of taking a step back. So what I have emphasized and encouraged business owners to do right now is really share the fun, share some exciting and fun posts. Um, I know that Leslie um, mentioned TikTok tips for the old people. I totally understand. I've been asking my niece as well because she's a master at it. Um, but I think if you can really start to share some heartfelt and warming, don't just constantly right now try to sell things because that's one of the things that we're noticing is really difficult right now. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the more free and engaging and educational content that you can share right now, the better. Because as the next couple of weeks settle in and people start becoming more comfortable, especially buying and purchasing things, you guys are going to be the first ones that they're thinking of. So great questions. Keep them coming. Yeah, funny memes do really great. I agree with you, Leslie. Funny things, funny memes. <laughs> I've seen so many things referencing Netflix series and um, just all kinds of really funny images. So those, I definitely get, we, we have the exact same thing. We're seeing the most engagement with those types of posts as well. So on that front though, if you can do a video that's funny, um, I know this is gonna really put a lot of you guys outside of your comfort zone and to be comfortable, to share things that make you a little bit vulnerable, be funny, be innovative, be creative. What are the businesses or maybe some of the people that you're watching that you enjoy watching? And how can you emulate some of the messaging that they're sharing? That's one of the things that um, I would really hope that you guys take away today is really see some of the posts that are the most engaging to you. What, what is engaging and sparking um, joy in your homes? And tr try to emulate that message with your business. And Susan, on your most engaging post about the heartfelt videos, that's this kind of the same with us. Whenever we post the videos about um, like our companies here, that's where we tend to see the most engagement as well. So people want to see that positivity um, and that thank you. Okay, so it looks like we have some um, requests for LinkedIn and TikTok. Of course, we might have to bring a younger audience in to help lead that conversation. Um, but if there's any other questions that you guys have or that you think of over the course of the next couple of days, um, make sure to reach out to Jesse or to me. Um, our contact information is listed here via email. Um, you can always just give us a shout. We're also on social media. Obviously, we're very engaged on social media right now. So um, you can also find us there as well. So, um, but unless, Jesse, do you have anything else to add? I do not. Just thank everyone for being on here. And this was fun. Yeah, this was great. And I really appreciate all the great comments. Um, and I would love to uh, chat with you guys offline. And um, let's just keep the momentum going, Foco. You guys are really doing an amazing job. I know I only touched upon three businesses today, but like Leslie with Dream Dinners, you're doing a great job. Tori with In-Depth Wraps, you're doing a remarkable job. And for those of you that don't know, Susan Grunwald is the marketing guru behind Halcyon. So round of applause for each of you. You guys are doing an incredible job. Keep the momentum going. Um, let's keep the creative energy flowing. And like I said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to um, reach out to us anytime. Thanks, guys.